Today's video is a little bit different. We're going to be looking back at a video that I did before the season that has just ended began, where I ran through every Premier League team and said, this is the player to watch this season. We're going to see how bad those players did, or whether I had some genius moment. Now, I already know that one shout is pretty good. I genuinely don't remember the rest, other than the Leicester one. So we're going to watch through them together and see how I did. Starting off first, we're going with Arsenal, and I'm going to go with Gabriel Martinelli. Now, okay, initial impression. Martinelli, not an awful shout. Very, very exciting player when he's not injured. Let's see what else I had to say, though. They have made some signings, such as like the 50 mil signing of Ben White, who did not have the best Premier League debut last night, getting bullied by Tony. But Martinelli is a guy that I really, really enjoy watching. He's a very exciting, explosive forward player who looks like he's going to be getting more minutes if he can sustain a lack of injury. That's been the problem in the past is that he has repeatedly got little knocks here and there, so hasn't got a proper run in the team. But I love watching Martinelli play and I want to see more. I'd say that was a good shout, to be honest. Yes, he did have injury problems, and so that's why we didn't quite see as much as we would have liked. But when he did come in towards the end of the season, he's so lively. Really, really enjoy watching him play. Next up is Villa. Oh, dear. For Aston Villa, I'm going to go with Buendia. Now, there obviously are a couple of choices. They've made some big signings, including Danny Ings, which is going to be a lot of people's pick for this team. But Buendia, done really, really well at Norwich, has an incredible eye for a pass. Very, very nice, creative player, exciting to watch. And I'm really interested to see how he's going to partially fill that Jack Grealish void for Villa. Okay, we don't need to hear any more. Buendia... <sighs> He didn't play anywhere near as much as we expected. He had injury problems, again, like probably a few people that are going to be in this list of players. It's just a shame. Maybe next season, now that they've got Coutinho, Bailey on one wing, Buendia on the other, Coutinho in the middle, Ings up top? We'll see. Pick of the bunch. Now, Brentford don't really need much introduction. If you watched okay. the opener of the Premier League last night, you will know they seem to be here to not mess about, really. Because, of course, they beat Arsenal on the opening day of the season. So I guess I recorded this the day after. Tony, I mean, I don't really need to listen to much more here. I don't think that this was a very bold shout. He smashed the record in the championship, which has now subsequently been beaten by Mitrovic. Looked really, really good. And so a lot of people thought that he was going to be their main man in the Premier League. Turns out that he kind of was. When Ericsson came in in January, that was big for them. But Tony did a very good job. I'm happy. It's already. Next up for Brighton, I'm going with a player Ooh. who actually isn't going to play the first few games. And it is Tarek Lamptey. I absolutely love this guy. Still do, by the way. Incredible player. He is a marauding fullback if ever I've seen one. Him driving forward on the ball is a brilliant sight to see. Yep. He is going to be out for the first three or four games of the season. The problem is that he then continued to be out throughout the season. And instead, their breakthrough player was Martin Kukureya, who won their player of the season. He was fantastic. I would love to see a team of Kukurera on one side and Lamptey both fully fit for a full season bombing down the wings. Unfortunately, we didn't get that. I still think that Lamptey is a fantastic player. I stand by my shout here because he is exciting to watch and he just, if he can stop being so injury prone, hopefully we'll see the best of him. So, Lamptey's my pick. As most of you will probably think, hmm. they're not the most thrilling team in the world. They don't have the most exciting play style, etc. A lot of it is uh, using the physicality of people like Chris Wood. And he is yep. one that you could end up watching because he's probably going to get quite a few goals this season. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. Uh, yeah, I went with McNeil on this one because... Again, there isn't really much to choose from for Burnley, unless you go for just a defender in thinking, OK, that's all they do. They defend. Maybe Nick Pope, who actually had a good season. Tarkovsky, Ben Mee now both going on freeze, but they did get relegated. I thought McNeil is kind of the one with a bit of flair and would be interesting. I'd probably say Corne was their guy that ended up being 
the the pick of the bunch, really, and he has now got suitors for subsequent Premier League moves following their relegation. But McNeil, I still think he's a decent player. I feel like he's just held back a little bit by Burnley, but I, I, I'm fine to hold my hands up and say, this was a tough one. It's Burnley. Let's move on. Play. Now, Lukaku would be the easy pick for Chelsea. I've put mm. him to be my top scorer, and you can see where he made Chelsea finish in my Premier League rankings video that you'll find on my channel. But I'm going with Havertz. I think that he's going to do really well this Interesting. season. I think that this is going to be his breakthrough Prem season. Obviously, he did really, really well at Leverkusen before he came into Chelsea. He Struggled, did. had COVID, apparently long COVID as well. Then, yep. towards the end of the season, we're starting to find a bit of form under Tuchel. Now... Interestingly, you can copy and paste what I said about his previous season onto the one that has just happened. Because towards the end of the season, he get like he got more goals, he got more assists. He was starting to play as sort of like a false nine and a striker at times. So whether we are now going to see that going forward next season, is he going to be there out and out man in the middle? really. Lukaku could very easily move. Werner, when he's played, has played more on the left wing. So Havertz, again, I thought that he'd be playing more than he did at the beginning. Towards the end of the season, my pick is sort of justified, but I can't say that it was a great shout because you wouldn't say that Havertz has been their standout player this season. You'd probably go for one of the centre-backs is definitely a good shout in either Rudiger or Thiago Silva. Reese James, when he's been fit, has been phenomenal. And Mason Mount got a load of goals and assists. So, unfortunately, not the best shout, but we're starting to see the reason why I picked him. Yeah. Now, Palace is an interesting one. I wanted to go for Eze. <laughs> However, we don't know when he's going to be back playing. It might oh, not even be this no. year. So, he might be out for a few more months. So, I'm going to go with Anderson. For a look. Right. I mean, that freeze frame sums it up. Uh, that's kind of my reaction to seeing what I'm seeing right now. With the attacking talent that they had, I guess to be fair, we didn't know about Vieira, right? And so I thought under Hodgson that they would be a more defensive team because that's what he does. But... Oh, no. <laughs> We're moving on. My shout. Off the back of a Brazil Olympic mm. gold medal, I'm going to go with Richarlison for Everton this season. I feel like okay. he's he's been there a couple of years and he's shown that he is good, but he needs to step up to that next level. And considering how well Calvert-Lewin did in terms of goal scoring last season, I feel like Richarlison is going to have to up his game a little bit to potentially be seen as the main man. Now... This did end up happening, but not because Richarlison was incredible. It was more because DCL was just injured for most of the season. Now, if anyone out there had said, like, Damari Gray after he'd been signed, or Anthony Gordon, bang on the money. Richarlison, I mean, he did end up being their guy, really, as well as Gordon. Gray at the beginning of the season... He's the guy that the Everton fans have sort of fallen in love with because everybody else despises this man. He's so annoying to watch. He's not likeable, <laughs> really, is he? He dives all the time. He does all of that nonsense. However, he scored some important goals for Everton and he's done okay. I don't want to give myself much credit for this one because what I said didn't happen even if he became their main striker. Good season. Leeds next, and Rafinha is my guy. Okay. I really, really enjoy watching him play. He's a... I still do. A lot. He's incredible. Winger that likes to do skills, trickery, great dribbling. He's an exciting player to watch. And so it had to be Rafinha for me. I don't really need to say much else. I just really enjoy watching this guy play football. Yep. And I think that's justified. He's now potentially going to be moving to Barcelona, uh, which is crazy for him. But he's one of Leeds' best players. Now, obviously, their season could have been very different if Calvin Phillips and Bamford and players like that, their, the rest of their injury crisis hadn't happened. But he was basically their standout guy that you were trying to rely on 
and luckily for them, they did stay up. Now, this is the one. I knew that I had made this prediction at the start of the year, and boy, was I right. Now, let's see what I actually had to say about Dewsbury Hall when I made this prediction, because I didn't think that we were going to have like the injuries and stuff that we did in order for him to get his starting place. But once he was in, he stayed in for the rest of the season. He was phenomenal. Probably our player of the season. So let's see what I had to say about Kiernan. Now, next up is Leicester. Obviously, my team. There's a couple of shouts that we could have here. Buba Sumare that, <laughs> that we've signed from Lille looks like a Yaya Torre style. He did in pre-season and then apparently had personal problems and injuries throughout the season, so he didn't feature much, unfortunately. A player who's going to absolutely dominate. However, <laughs> I'm going to go Not with a quite. bit of a, a, a bit of a, a throw in the wind, really. We're going with Kiernan Dewsbury Hall. That's not a saying, by the way. Don't know what I was on there. A youngster who has been out on loan a couple of times, did really, really well last season out on loan. He did, And is really Luton. pushing now to become a first-team player. Now, he won't be starting every single game, but he's going to get appearances off the bench. He has been doing in all of preseason, even the Community Shield. And yep. I feel like if, for example, Madison gets injured... Oh, I did call that he get in the team because of injuries. Okay. You're going to see him come in and start to play. And I feel like he's just a really exciting player. Really, really nice and technical on the ball. Has a great eye for a pass. Good movement. And he's young. He's got a lot of potential. So, again, a bit of an outside pick, this one. Someone would have probably gone for Bertrand, Sumari or Daka, one of the new signings. But, yeah. yeah. Kin and Dewsbury Hall. I tell you what, I will not have a better prediction than that. Probably ever in these kind of videos. Dewsbury Hall lit the world up uh, this season. He was phenomenal. Honestly, so, so good. Probably the most consistent player in our entire season by a long way. He was like 7 out of 10 or higher every single game. So I don't really care how bad the rest of my predictions are. I nailed that one. Next up, Liverpool. Now, a couple of shouts from people that have been telling me in advance of this video, I should go for Harvey Elliott. However, mm -hmm. I want to go... For Jota. And the reason why is because Firmino hasn't been the same for the last few seasons since he had that really, really good patch for Liverpool. And I feel like it is yep. time for Jota, hopefully, to not get injured this season because that ruined him last year. And just make that step up to potentially being starting with Salah and Mane either side of him. I really, really enjoy watching Jota play. He's a very good player. And let's hope that we see more of him this year. Pretty good shout, I'd say, right? Maybe it was a kind of obvious one, but as I said in that, when I asked people, I didn't go and ask about every single club, but some people in my streams knew that I was doing this video, and so I asked, and a lot of people said some of the youngsters. So I'm glad I went with Jota. He proved himself. He was really, really good and was one of the top scorers uh, in the league. So, yeah. Not a bad shout. This one looks okay as well. Manchester City now. And a lot of people are going to take Jack Grealish. £100 million signing. Yeah. Really, really obvious pick. But I want to go with Mares, And the reason why is because I still feel... Definitely no Leicester bias here. I feel like he's a bit underrated for them. He and is. And he's been absolutely smashing it so far in pre-season. And I'm kind of hoping that this season is the one where people really, truly realise how good he is for them. I think a lot of people this season have started to appreciate Mares more for Man City. He's been one of their best players, or he was one of their best players in this season just gone. Obviously, you've got people like KDB that take the limelight, and Foden seems to take the limelight, even if he isn't the best player on the pitch that game. I, I guess because he's young and English, but... Riyad has been amazing for Man City. You take like the last year and a half, maybe pushing towards two seasons now... He's just getting better and better. He's really fit into Pep's system. And as I say, he's been incredible. So I'm happy with that shout. I'll take it. Now we've got Man U. And I'm guessing I've gone with Varane, Sancho, Ronaldo. Don't know if he'd signed. Manchester United. Oh, I'm going go. with Sancho. <laughs> I love watching the guy play. Every single time he's on the ball, he looks forward. He's direct. He's pacey. He's skillful. He's exciting as a footballer. And he is all of those things that I've just said. However, we all know how disastrous Man United's season was. 
And he was unfortunately part of that. It just didn't quite click for him. Maybe it will in this upcoming season under Ten Hag. Hopefully for his sake and for excitement's sake, he'll hit the ground running. He'll have a really good season under Eric and will get himself back in that England squad because he's really exciting when he's in that as well. Whereas right now he's been dropped because of his form. So I'm excited to see more of Sancho, hopefully in a better system with a better manager that can really get the most out of him and see the Dortmund Sancho that we were expecting when Man United made this signing. Now, this is not going to be a surprise. St. Maximan is my Newcastle pick. Exactly what I've said about some of these other wingers. Probably one of the most, if not the most exciting players to watch in the Premier League. 100%. I still agree with my statement there. However, this... Completely wrong. And the reason why, St. Maximan, yeah... He's good. He's exciting. At times a bit frustrating, and he didn't quite light the world up this season. If you were some kind of prediction wizard, you would have said that this was the season of the revival of Joel Linton. He's the guy. There is no other answer to this question of who was Newcastle's man throughout the season... I mean, maybe not at the start, but once he got moved back to centre mid, wow, what a transformation he's had. You also had Bruno, uh, Bruno Guimaraes come in. He's been really, really good for them. But Joel Linton, man, crazy. If he keeps that up next season, that's going to be phenomenal to see him and Bruno in the midfield together for a full year. Lucci. For Norwich, I'm going to go with Todd Cantwell. Did quite well in the Premier League last time he was in the league. Did well in the championship again. And so he's just an exciting player. He's quite creative. And he yeah. has that vision that sometimes players that are making the jump from the championship to the Prem don't seem to be able to pick out those passes that they did against worse defenders. What am I talking about? And worse sort of structured teams. But he's impressive as a player. Obviously, they've lost Buendia. And so some... That was huge for them. More of the fall is basically going to come down on Campwell. He's going to have more influence on the team. So he's my pick. <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> Terrible. Southampton next. I'm going with Adam Armstrong. Absolutely okay. smashed it for Blackburn. And now has made that step up to the Premier League for Southampton as their Danny Ings replacement. I don't think this is an awful shout because when he has played, he's been decent. He's had to adjust to Premier League football, but he's shown that he can do it. He just needs to get that consistency. Kyle Walker-Peters would have been a very good shout here because he's been very, very good. Uh, Brozier was good for Southampton, but no one would have predicted that one, right? So Adam Armstrong, ah, I'll take it. I, I could have said someone that was much worse. James Ward-Prowse, obviously, would have been a good shout as well. Did see him in the Prem. For Spurs, I'm going to go with Gilles. <laughs> oh, they no. They also signed Romero from Atalanta, who could be an absolute animal. Why didn't I go with Romero? Oh, he was so good this season as well. Absolutely phenomenal. But Gilles... Very exciting, younger player, uh, was playing in the Olympics as well and showed that he does have a bit about him. Yeah, he did. I'm very interested to see how he's going to fit in at Tottenham. He isn't, <laughs> apparently. He's going to be shipped back off to Spain. Oh, bad, bad. Sh I should have gone with Romero. Aye. Watford, I'm going, is Marla Saar. He was okay. so electric to watch when he was in the Premier League last time. Same again in the Championship. Yep. I want him to go through the season without an injury and show mm. why there was a lot of rumoured interest, for example, from Liverpool. Liverpool. Last time Watford yep. got relegated, a lot of people were saying that Liverpool were going to try and sign Saar, but it didn't end up happening. He was instrumental when they actually managed to end Liverpool's unbeaten run in the league. He was. And so I'm excited to see him back in the Brom. I guess the shout really has to be Dennis for Watford. Even though they got relegated, he was the guy that had like a really, really solid spell uh, and was looking impressive. This was obviously pre Ranieri, which was a bizarre appointment. I don't know what Watford were doing this season. They should have kept the manager that they started the year with. He did the best out of all of them. 
<laughs> West Ham, I'm going with Ben Rama. I'm really hoping okay. that this is a season that he steps up. Last year, Lingard took a lot of the responsibility in he that did. sort of position, but they haven't managed to re-sign him. Ben Rama's had a year to adapt to a new team, a new league, and a new play style. I really enjoy watching the guy. I was actually jealous when West Ham signed him ahead of Leicester. Still am. And so I want to see Ben Rama do well, and I'm hoping that this is his season. Okay, interesting. I mean, he did have a good, like, half of the season, but a bit like West Ham in general, really, he just didn't have the consistency throughout the whole one. I think Declan Rice is probably... Um, their most consistent player. And then obviously Bowen was fantastic and has shown that he is capable now of even performing well internationally as he's got his first cap. So congrats to him. He was phenomenal. And even after coming back from his injury, he was really good afterwards as well. So ah, Ben Rama, it's not the worst shout in the world because he did have at least a, a, a good period in the season. Towards the end, not so much. Didn't feature all the time. You had other people like Fornals, Lanzini, etc. So, could have been better there. And then we end things off with Wolves. And I'm going to go with Trincao, who they mm. have got from Barcelona. Again, linked with Leicester. We he were was. potentially going to get him on loan, but he has gone to Wolves. Yep. Shock, Portuguese player signing for Wolves, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> but an exciting youngster that could... And, well, he already has a high ceiling and high potential. Can he reach that in the Premier League? For no. I mean, he wasn't awful. And he did show some signs of his talent. Uh, I saw some of the stuff that he did before going to Wolves for Barcelona as well. And you can see the raw talent is there. Just needs to try and unlock uh, the bits that link his... Sometimes insane dribbling, sometimes insane vision, and make it consistent. And then you'll see the kind of signing that he could be, and he could flourish. But uh, I, I think Wolves was a hard one. They had a really, really up and down season as well. They started the year off not scoring that many goals, so you wouldn't really go with many of the forwards. But the defence were really, really good. Saiz, Cody, etc. Solid. Second half of the season just sort of fell away from European fights and everything like that. So, a tricky one, but, I mean, I think we made some good shouts, we made some bad shouts. Dewsbury Hall is by far the best, because I basically got everything bang on <laughs> to do with him. Some other ones, again, Jota was a decent shout, Rafinha's okay. Anderson will will ignore that one, uh, I think. But there we go, so that is me having a little look back at my predictions for ones to watch for each Premier League team this season. I will be doing a new one of these for the upcoming season, but let me know. Did you think that I was unlucky with some of my shouts? Were you impressed with some of them? Did you have differing opinions to me? If so, let me know down in the comments. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.